Good afternoon and welcome to this Olympic special edition of Keys News. I'm Meg Lee. And I'm Zara Connolly. Monday saw Manchester host a Heroes Welcome Parade for Great Britain's Olympians as their week of events began. Ben Hobson went down to join in the celebrations. 150,000 people braved the pouring rain to line the streets of Manchester on Monday as our Olympic athletes were paraded through the town. The athletes made their way down Deansgate and were commemorated on stage in front of the television cameras with millions also watching at home. 214 medals across both GB Olympic and Paralympic teams justifies a hero's welcome. Thousands of fans line the streets here in Manchester to watch them parade through the town, finishing their ceremony here in Albert Square. Crowd favourites such as Jessica Ennis-Hill, who announced her retirement last week, were in attendance to celebrate the incredible events in Rio. A performance from the Kaiser Chiefs spurred the crowd on despite the pouring rain. But nothing was going to ruin an occasion such as this. The receptions the athletes received was unbelievably justified. Ben Hobson, Keys TV News. Now we are lucky enough to say that we had a British Olympic medalist in the studio early this week. Emily Diamond won a bronze medal in the 4x400 metre relay in Rio, alongside Christina Horrigu, Eileen Doyle and Anika Onura. Emily was here to chat to our reporter James Diamond just before the parade on Monday. OK, Emily, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to Keys News. Um, first thing I wanted to talk about was your Olympic experience. So it was your second Olympics, but the first one you ran in, got to the semi-finals of the 400 metres and then won a bronze in the 4x4 relay. Mm -hmm. Every Olympian's experience is dramatic in its own way, but yours was more so in the sense that you had a bit of an illness, didn't you, before your 400? Do you want to just talk us through that? Yeah, so my uh, 400 metre heat was on Friday morning. Um, I woke up sort of middle of the night on Thursday morning with um, horrible fever, um, throwing up spent most of the night um, in the bathroom. Um, it, was, it was not pleasant, I had a horrible fever. Um, had all the sort of medical team um, in my room at 2 a.m. Um, I thought that was my Olympics over. I thought I'd had such a good season, I'd trained so hard and worked so hard to get to this point and just like that it was gonna be taken away from me. So I had a few sort of horrible hours um, thinking the worst, um, but luckily it, it happened the morning before and not the morning of, otherwise it would have been a completely different story. But um, the, the medical staff were fantastic in, in sort of helping me to recover and get hydrated and to sort of flush out anything that was that was bad in my system and um, when I came to my heat on the Friday I still was far from perfect my stomach was still not happy um, and I have no idea how I managed to run run around that heat and let alone and then qualify for the semi-final um, I think the adrenaline is just what got me through really um, I don't sort of quite quite understand how it happened but I'm, I'm so glad that I managed to sort of not perform how I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to go out there and really struggle but I was just so grateful that I didn't do that and I still managed to qualify for the semi. Mm. After London 2012 there was a massive parade of course through London but there wasn't one anywhere else. Mm -hmm. How important do you think it is that events like this are held in places outside of the capital? Yeah I think it's really important. It's lovely um, that sort of the local uh, people from this area or, or further up north can can travel to Manchester and they don't have to go all the way to London, which is sort of a greater cost and it's more time out of, out of the day or, or the week. So it's really nice, I think, to, um, to do various parades in, in different areas of the country. So um, even local children can come out after school and, um, and see the athletes um, parading around, which they wouldn't probably be able to do if it was in London, especially it being on a weekday. So I think it's really nice that that there were, and I mean, it's nice for us as well because we get to do it twice. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice on sort of every aspect. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And how do you think your life has changed, if at all, since winning a medal at the Olympics? Of course, there was something iconic about yours as well in the sense that it was Britain's 66th, so it surpassed London's tally. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any sort of change in your life since then? Have you been in contact with much more media organisations and things since? Yeah, it's, it's certainly been really hectic. Um, there's been sort of events every week since since Rio, whether it's interviews or um, parades or um, celebrations, things like that, which has been so lovely because because the Games was abroad and, and away um, from home soil. 
it's so nice to be able to come back and then sort of everyone's so uh, supportive because although there were so many fans out in Rio, because it wasn't in London like it was four years ago, we didn't see sort of the reaction of of the public and how we were possibly affecting the public um, while it was taking place. So since coming back, it's, it's been lovely and people have been so supportive. I've sort of had messages coming through left, left right and centre, people saying their congratulations and... Um, and things like that and it, it's amazing but it's all still really surreal and I don't think it's going to sink in for a long time yet that um, quite what we did while out in Rio but it's been amazing. Okay well Emily thank you very much for joining us here at Keys News, um, best of luck for the future and hopefully maybe see you in Tokyo in four years. No problem, thank you. Crazy Pedro is famous for its wacky pizza creations have gone one step further to design special Olympic style pizzas. The pizzas were made from scratch using a range of toppings and were produced on the day of the Olympic parade. The Going for Gold collection was created to commemorate the athletes' performances in Rio and sold out within hours on Monday. The most notable pizza creations were of Jessica Ennis Hill, triple gold medal Paralympian Ellie Simmons, quadruple gold medalist Mo Farah and double gold medalist Andy Murray. One of Salford University's very own professors has been working at the Olympics for the last 10 years as a media expert. Professor Andy Mears' role involves testing new technology for use in the media industry. Our reporter Matt Bolling spoke to him. So for 10 years now I've been working with the Olympic movement to look at media innovation at the Games. For the last 100 years, at every Olympic Games, there's been something new. So slow motion replay, underwater cameras, 3D TV, HD TV, everything in the media gets piloted at the Olympic Games. So from one Games to the next, you can get a snapshot of really where we are at the cutting edge of technology in, in, in media terms. And so this year in Rio, it was uh, 3D filming, 360 filming, but also virtual reality. That was a big experiment at Rio this year. The fact that the Heroes Parade was in Manchester for the first day is a great indication of where Greater Manchester is and the, and the neighbouring regions are in terms of their investment into sport. You know, we had the Commonwealth Games in Manchester not so long ago and there's a huge sporting legacy from that. The number of athletes that went to the Olympic Games in Rio and trained here in Greater Manchester is just phenomenal. So the state of sport here is extraordinary and it's a fantastic place to train and a fantastic place just to grow up learning sports. The, the velodrome and the Manchester facilities are extraordinary. It's just, it's just a wonderful place for sports. And uh, one of the Manchester-based athletes out of the parade was Hannah Russell of Salford University, or in a, a word on her. Every athlete is a unique story and each one is very different in terms of how people get into sports, how they get nurtured through sport and to have Hannah representing the nation but also the university at the Paralympic Games is just an inspiration I think for everyone. Now we've asked you the viewers to share your favourite moments from the Rio Olympics with us. So here we've got at Nathan Salt one got to be Bryony Page winning trampoline silver moment of history for British gymnastics. Well it really was wasn't it? It really was because no other GB, well Team GB Olympian has ever won a medal at the at the trampolining competition. I know, it was a re really, really good, really, really good. Definitely. And then we also got another tweet from at Keys RL. The opening ceremony was magnificent, showing the origins of Brazil up to the present day using projected video. Stunning. Did you manage to see the opening ceremony? I didn't, but I can imagine it was spectacular. With Brazil being such a colourful country, I can just imagine it. it. It definitely was. It was amazing. They had these great, massive visuals all across the, the middle of the stadium, oh. which was fantastic. Oh, yeah. and then we've also got at Thomas Foster underscore when Jess Ennis Hill got a silver. That was really good for her. Yeah. I was so happy for her. Definitely, I think it's going to be such a shame now that she's retired. You know, because she just come back from having a child, I and know. with that in mind, she was such an inspiration to every woman out there. I just, what will the Olympics be without her in four years' time? Exactly. You never know. It's was just, that your favourite moment of the Olympics? My favourite was when Jade Jones won. That was, I really, really definitely. liked that. I thought she was really good in the taekwondo, definitely. Oh, she was really good. I I'd can't. say mine, it was a sad moment, but it was Lutalu Mohammed in the um, in the judo with that crying oh, yeah. moment. I just felt so sorry for him, but you can tell he's passionate about Team GB, definitely. Oh. <laughs> now, you've heard about our favourite moments. Our reporter, Ryan Dobney, went down to the parade on Monday to find out the public's favourite moments from this summer's Olympics. 
So what was your definitive moment of the Olympics for you? What what stands out as, as a you know a big moment? Yeah, I think like the biggest thing about the Olympics for me was just seeing Great Britain do so well. Yeah, yeah. Like that completely shocked me. Like I've kind of watched 20 years, I've watched Olympics for a few years now and like they've just never done so and I think it like made me really proud to be British. Yeah. Like we were really competing against China and Germany and America. Like well less Germany, but like the other two we really usually smash it. And then like we literally went there and kind of did great great rides. It was like really impressive. I was proud to be British. Definitive moment of the Olympics. You know, we had Jess Ennis starring, we had Christina Ahorogu stars like that. But for you, what was your opinion on... It was the cycling team. It's like... Absolutely amazing. I mean, they got, they got, sorry, yeah, they got 12 medals overall, and is that something to do with the velodrome here for the training facilities Definitely. being in Manchester? Definitely, yes, yes. We work better up north than <laughs> How proud this summer were you of Team GB then? I was amazingly proud. Everybody did so brilliant. I couldn't be any more proud. And should we definitely be taking this into uh, the 2020 Olympics? Yes, definitely, 100%. The Paralympics is, because I went to early the Olympics in London in 2012, watched the normal Olympics, and really got hooked on the Paralympics this time, and especially some of the stories, because I can't remember who, who it was, but one of the girls, she's, she only started four years ago, and she's gone in four years from losing both legs to getting a bronze or a silver medal in the Paralympics, and that's just ridiculous. Like. When you look at what I've achieved, or like what most people have achieved in their life, to go from such a low point to such a high point in such a short amount of time is just amazing. Now, that's all from us here at Keys News and our Olympic special. Don't forget to keep sending us your favourite moments from Rio using the hashtag Keys Olympic Moments. Keys will be back next Tuesday at 1.30. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.